Today's video is from from Modern Wisdom. It's titled Let's Talk About Your Religion Then. Douglas Murray silences Muslim politician with facts. Before we get into today's video, my name is Ogechi. If you're stopping by for the first time, hello, hi, welcome to my channel. Do well to like, share, subscribe, comment, drop a comment. What do you think about this conversation? I'm dropping my thought during the course of this video and after the video. Do not forget to subscribe, okay? And turn on the post notification bell. You see the bell very close to the subscribe button there. Turn it on so you get notified anytime I drop a new video, okay? And to all my returning subscribers and viewers, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. You guys were heading to 2,000 subscribers. Super excited about that. About that. So let's jump into this video. It's titled, Let's Talk About Your Religion Then. Douglas Murray silences Muslim politician with facts. It's coming from modern wisdom. Let's get into it. And, and, if, and if I can say so, so if I can say so, race. not only has it not well. got anything to do with race, but the bit that Miriam has not mentioned, which it has a very great deal to do with, is religion. This has a great deal to do with religion, and we have what not does? so far what, what discussed does? the religious aspect of this, because Islamic State calls itself Islamic State for a reason. Douglas Murray is at it again. In the iconic interview on BBC, he debates a Muslim about policies around how returning jihadists who have committed crimes overseas should be treated by the government and the broader impact of the Islamic religion in Western culture. Douglas Murray argued that the traditional route of prosecution faces significant obstacles, primarily due to the difficulty in gathering concrete evidence against individuals who have committed crimes overseas. As a result, he advocated for a multifaceted strategy to address this issue. He also addressed the elephant in the room, the influence of religion in shaping the views of people who become jihadists. Douglas Murray did not hold back. Watch. Miriam, why do you say that it's a, a racial, there's a racial aspect to taking away somebody's citizenship if they're suspected to be an is Islamic extremist? Because where are you supposedly sending them back to? Let's take the most recent case of a uh, young man who is half, um, who's got, who's of Vietnamese origin, but who is a British citizen. This is the one we going know? through the Supreme Court. The Absolutely, appeal. he's mm -hmm. going through the Supreme Court at the moment. Uh, Britain wants to take away his citizenship. Uh, Viet Vietnam says he's got nothing to do with this. He's not a Vietnamese citizen as far as they're concerned, the only reason that we can consider taking away his citizenship is because we do not regard him no. as fully British. No, and if that I, is if a racial just, if, I can, if I can just correct, Douglas, if, I can really ju if I can just correct <laughs> that, that. Correct me, the problem about, uh, about uh, what Miriam's just said, among other things, is you can do the experiment, thought experiment another way. Let's say um, a, a pseudo-state was set up in another country in the world. It's not and a state. It, uh, I, I know it's not a state, you know it's not a state, they think they're a state, they call themselves a state, and a lot of people who burn their passports or go over to fight for them, believe they are a state. Let's pretend another pseudo-state was set up from any other religious or other kind of background. If people from Britain were going to that state of any background or any origin, and they were cutting off people's heads and raping women and children and so on, I think this country would take a rather tough stance about it. And I think, among other things, one of the things we would look at was withdrawal of passports, among other things. If you say you are signed up to this uh, appalling state, Mi then maybe we take you at your word. Miriam's case is there is a racial element. Oh, but there should not ever be. 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 And you I, 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 if I but I think so something Miriam said that uh, we really must come back on is that somebody is not considered fully British. Absolutely. You are either British or you're not. Well, well then you no can't path. withdraw somebody's and, citizenship. And They're it, British and citizens and so we so, have to deal with If I can say so, race. not only has it not well. got anything to do with race, but the bit that Miriam has not mentioned, which it has a very great deal to do with, is religion. This has a great deal to do with religion, and we have what not does? so far what, what discussed does? the religious aspect of this, because Islamic State calls itself Islamic State for a reason. They follow certain principles, misguided in your opinion, misguided in my opinion, but certain principles that they say they derive from Islam. All right, let Any discussion that. of this has to take them at their let word to that. some extent. Well, I mean, I, I think it's very interesting that we would sort of try and essentialize Islamic State. They're very much like any cult or, uh, if you like, I, I, I think you can, you can look, look at their if origins. Finish, if, you, if you compare them to any sort of cult or gang, there are usually uh, some similarities with the broader concept from which they're, de they're derived. So you get cults that are derived from Christianity. Sure. Very similarly, you would say that Daesh or Islamic State is derived from 
um, Islam, Islam in some way. Yeah. Uh, but I think the problem is to take things at face value no, and to certainly to corroborate their narrative by no, accepting their view that I'm it is a state and that no, they no, have I'm the legitimacy to call out. themselves Islamic. It, it, uh, it's uh, problematic. The, the WACO group in Waco uh, some years ago, everyone was interested in the religious claims they were making when they decided to become this millenarium crazy cult. I, uh, can I, if I, I can just yeah. finish. I, I, this, is a, this is a crucial thing we cannot avoid. I know it's uncomfortable. I know we want to keep no, no, avoiding it's not, it's not it. But the religious aspect, which Miriam didn't want to talk about, is no, an a I, vital if I thought part it was, of this discussion. If I and it's reliant I upon Mus Muslims all right. of all kinds to if, take if that on and tackle it. If I thought it was vital, Douglas, I absolutely would bring it back. But I think what's important is when you look at, for example, these rehabilitation programs, because that's what we're talking about here, is how to deal most effectively with the threat, is that we are talking about using methods that have been shown to be effective in other contexts and with other groups. Yeah, and and those are, can I, just, can I just finish, they are, they are methods that have been used in criminology and criminal studies oh. for decades and they've got nothing to do with Islam they just happen no. to okay. be effective we're gonna, we're gonna but have ISIS to let you does have this. a lot to do with Islam we're so. going to have to Douglas Murray's stance on addressing the complexities of jihadists returning to the UK emphasizes a crucial aspect often overlooked the influence of Islamic religion on extremism Murray points out that even if jihadists misinterpret Islam the religions perceived influence on their actions cannot be ignored Douglas Murray has been vocal about the challenges of integrating Islamic belief I think if I think if jihadists are threatening to come back to the UK, it's something to be worried about. These people are bloodthirsty, right? I think, and again, I I have uh, I remember when this jihadist thing was a thing, right? I remember I, I spoke with a friend of mine, of a few friends of mine who are Muslims, and it made me understand that Islam is actually a religion of peace. Like these people that, like these my friends are actually very peaceful, be very peace loving people. Like they are good people right it's just that jihadists have a particular i don't know maybe an evil i don't know and then they hide under the act of islam to do these evil things and i think that if they are actually you know going into villages going into cities killing and raping women it has to be taken full like they have to be taken accountability they have to act full accountability of whatever is happening I agree with um, um, Douglas Murray, and I also agree, I see where Miriam is also coming from. Sometimes these people come under the guise of Muslim, or being, an, um, from, uh, uh, being a Muslim to do some of these things. But I think that if jihadists are trying to actually return back to the, to the UK, it should be something people should be really worried about because these people can do a lot of havoc. And I feel like, yes, taking away their passports, Full punishment should be meted out to, you know, these people. And yeah, but let's continue. Islamic beliefs within Western societies, particularly concerning the radical interpretations that lead to jihadist ideologies. He, alongside other commentators like Sam Harris and Ayan Hirsi Ali, points out that while the majority of Muslims live peacefully, yeah. there's a non-negligible fraction whose interpretation of Islam poses a security threat. Harris and Hirsi Ali emphasized the need for a candid conversation about the elements within Islamic doctrine that jihadists exploit to justify violence. Murray's argument is that ignoring the ideological roots of jihadism under the guise of cultural sensitivity not only hinders the fight against extremism, but also fails to protect the values of liberal democracy. Yeah. I totally agree with Douglas Murray on this one. In a society that prizes free speech, addressing the root causes of ideological extremism is essential, essential, especially when these ideologies stem from religious interpretations that clash with democratic values. Simply enacting policies without engaging with the underlying beliefs can be ineffectual. It's important to foster open dialogues about religion, where constructive criticism is distinguished from phobia or hate speech. We should be able to talk about the influence of Islam on certain people without being labeled as Islamophobic. This is what free speech is all about. I totally agree with Douglas Murray. The, truth be told, Islam is a religion of peace because I have Muslim friends and they are very peaceful people. Very, very peaceful people. They hardly try to um, convert you into their religion. Very peaceful. I love how dedicated and how prayerful they are. Very peaceful people. Humble if you know, if you have Muslim friends, I'm sure you can attest to what I'm talking about. But there is a fraction of people who pose as Muslims and are perpetrating evil to the society. And it needs to be addressed. 
it needs to be addressed it needs the elephants in the room needs to be addressed it needs to be talked about and the fact that they are peaceful people doesn't mean that punishment shouldn't be meted out to people caught in this act i think it needs to be so i agree with um Douglas Murray on this one. Yeah. Anyway, let me know your thoughts or your comments concerning this particular conversation. What do you think about, you know, Islam being a religion of peace? I know for a fact that Islam is a religion of peace. They are very peaceful people. They preach peace and yeah, but there is a fraction of them that are not peaceful. They pose certain threats to the society and i think it needs to be dealt with um let's know your thoughts and your contribution about this particular conversation what do you think about it drop your thoughts and your comments are you a muslim what do you think about this jihadist um conversation do you think that punishment should be meted out do you think there should be a rehabilitation center do you think there should be a kind of sensitization i'm not sure but let's know your thoughts about it. especially if you're muslim or you have muslim friends what do you think about this particular thing do you have um jihadists being a threat to you in your city your state or where you come from um even in nigeria jihadists are a threat to even muslims themselves they fight them because they are not supporting if you're not able to support what they do even as a, as a muslim they don't care okay so yeah anyway let's know your thoughts or your comments about this particular video do not forget to like share subscribe and drop a comment on what you think and turn on your post notification bell i'll see you in my next episode bye bye